Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I am super excited to bring you part two of the beginner's guide to the aquarium hobby. In this video we are going to be looking at all of the things that you need to start your aquarium fish keeping hobby. Hope you enjoy the video, appreciate you being here. So I know for new fish keepers it can be so confusing what do you need to start a fish tank? I'm hoping I can bring my 41 years of fish keeping experience along with the 80 fish tanks that we currently have up and running in our fish room, as well as my education, my master's degree in biotechnology and chemical science, my master's cert in aquaculture and fish health, and the fact that I'm a college biology professor. Hopefully all those things will help make this process a little bit easier for you. So let's get started. Thing number one, you need a fish tank. Now there are lots of ways to go about this. In fact, we talk about some of the better sizes in the first part of this beginner series, but that's the first thing you're going to need is the tank itself. We also discussed in part one how important it is to do your research and try to figure out what types of fish you wanna purchase before you buy the tank, and that's gonna help you determine the size of the tank. Now two things that might be really helpful for you as you're deciding what type of fish tank to buy we have two playlists down in the description below. There's gonna be a lot of information in the description below if you want to research further. And that is we've gone through and done the pros and cons of many different sizes tanks. And we've also looked at stocking options for those size tanks. So you might wanna check those out to help you determine what size tank you want. Now, if you figured that out, awesome. You are ahead of the game. What else do you need? Next thing you wanna consider is a fish tank light. It's pretty cool to have fish, not so cool when you can't see them. So we have in the description below a video on fish tank lighting 101. There's a couple of fish tank lights that I really like for the beginner. I think my favorite right now is the Higer light. I will put Amazon affiliate links down in the description. I'll try to organize them based on the equipment that we've talked about. But if you want more information on some of these, uh, these pieces of equipment or you want to purchase them, there will be links in the description below. But the Higer lights are really good for a beginner because they don't cost a lot of money and they show really great color. So the light is something that you're gonna need. The next thing you wanna consider is a heater. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. If you're getting a tank 10 gallons and above, I really like the Eheim heaters. And again, I'll put links down in the description below. Those I have found work the best for us. The inherent problem with most fish tank heaters is they tend to break. These have been very reliable but a heater is definitely something you wanna consider for most tropical fish applications. Now, if you're keeping goldfish or some of the cooler water fish, might not be as necessary, but for the most part, for most beginners, a heater is gonna be a really necessary thing. The size of the heater that you need, generally speaking, you want about three watts per gallon. So as an example, if you've got a 10 gallon tank, you're gonna want a heater that's between 30 and 50 watts. You go smaller than that, it might be running too often, any larger than that, and it just takes up too much space and it's an unnecessary amount of cost. The next thing is you're gonna want a filter. Now we did a beginner's guide to filtration that I highly recommend you check out, but if for the beginner, my strong recommendation is the hang on back filter. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One, it's relatively easy to maintain, it's easy to set up, and it's relatively easy to change out the filter media and it's a low cost. We have done videos on how to lower the cost of hang on back filters, my personal favorite. And again, some of this depends on the size of the tank. I really like two brands of filters, the Marineland Pro Series and the Seachem Tidal line. I will put links down in the description below for those of you who wanna check them out, get more information, read the reviews, that kind of thing. But those are both really good filters. If you're going 10 gallons or less, I also really like the Aquatop, uh, the Forza 5 to 15 is a really good filter for that five to 10 gallon tank. But a hang on back filter is definitely something that you wanna do. If you wanna learn more about how you can save money on the actual cartridges, I'll put that video down in the description below. You're gonna want a lid for your tank and there's a couple reasons for that. One, fish do jump. Even fish you wouldn't expect to jump out of the tank, sometimes you'll find them on the floor. Covering your tank will prevent that from happening. And the second thing is it'll cut down on evaporation and keep more of the water in your tank as well. The next thing you're gonna want is a thermometer. I do not rely on the heater inside the tank to tell me the temperature of that tank. It's gonna usually get you pretty close, but I like to have that thermometer, that separate thermometer, that tells me what the tank water actually is. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go with that. One, you can get the ones that stick on the side of the glass. I tend not to like those because they can be hard to read and they can be inconsistent. I like the ones that just are 
the old school ones that just kind of float in the tank. Maybe they got a suction cup and you just stick it on there. It's really cheap. I will put a link down in the description below, but you definitely want that and use the thermometer to tell you the temperature of the water, not the heater. If you're gonna be purchasing a tank that's 20 gallons or larger, I would highly recommend at least consider a fish tank stand. If you don't have sturdy furniture, even for a five or 10 gallon, you still might wanna consider a stand, but certainly for the 20 or larger, just keep in mind, as we talked about in the first video, your tank is gonna weigh roughly 10 pounds per gallon once you add in the rocks and the water and everything else. So definitely consider a stand. At this point, if you are a beginner, most of the store-bought stands are probably gonna be adequate for that size tank. The next thing you're gonna want is a net. The size of the net is gonna be dependent upon the fish that you keep. I always tend to go a little bit larger just in case my interests change over time and my fish get a little bit bigger. I still have a net that's capable of catching them when I need to or scooping out fish when they die, unfortunately. But a net is definitely something you're gonna want. Next thing you're gonna need is some fish food. So I would have that on hand when you're buying everything else. For us, we feed exclusively Northfin fish foods. We are sponsored by Flip Aquatics. I will put their link down in the description below. They sell Northfin foods. It is a high-end food, but in my opinion, if you're going to spend money on fish, it's best to try to keep them as healthy as you can. And Northfin is one of the best fish foods out on the market today. Really awesome ingredients. Something else to consider, now this isn't required, but I find it makes a fish tank look a lot better. If you've seen some of our fish tanks in our fish room, you'll notice that we have a background on almost every single one of our fish tanks. I happen to paint my backgrounds, but you can get store-bought backgrounds from most local fish stores and just tape them on. And the reason for that is tanks tend to look a lot nicer when there is a background as opposed to seeing the wall behind the tank and maybe a hang on back filter and some cords. It doesn't cost a lot of money and it can go a long way in making your fish tank look really, really nice. I've talked about how to paint backgrounds before. I'll put that in the description below, as well as some DIY options in case you wanna check that out and keep the cost down. Now, we've already talked about you're gonna have a filter, you're gonna have a light, you're gonna have a heater, minimally. You're gonna have those three things. Most wall outlets only give you the ability to plug in two things. And so one of the things I often forget when we're setting up a new tank and it's very frustrating is a power strip. I highly recommend buy a power strip, certainly one that has its own internal breaker, and try to keep that off the floor, try to keep it away, as far away from the tank as you possibly can, just so that you're not running the risk of getting water and electricity mixing near your tank. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the things that you're gonna want to make sure your water parameters and your water is healthy for your fish. The first thing is water conditioner. You wanna buy something that is going to remove chlorine and chloramines from your water. We are sponsored by Fritz Aquatics. It is a fantastic company. They sell water conditioners that are, that are very good. The other thing that most people forget, and I think this is possibly one of the most important things you can do if you are new, and that is avoid issues with ammonia and nitrite spikes. You may have heard of something called the nitrogen cycle. Fish produce ammonia. That is a waste product that is very toxic to them if it builds up in the aquarium. That ammonia gets converted to something called nitrite, which is also toxic to fish. And then finally, that nitrite is converted to nitrate. We do water changes to deal with that, something I'll talk about in a future video. But we want to avoid that process as best we can. There are products on the market that claim to be able to start your fish tank cycle or a, a speed it up in some way most of those products are garbage. There are a few that are good. One of them is from our channel sponsor, Fritz Aquatics. It's called Fritzzyme 7. It has nitrifying bacteria. So if you buy a product, make sure it has live nitrifying bacteria in the product. Anything else probably isn't going to work. So you add that just based on the directions on the bottle, based on the fish tank that you purchase. You can actually add a couple fish at that time. I wouldn't add more than one or two in your tank. And that live nitrifying bacteria is going to make sure that that toxic ammonia and nitrite get converted to nitrate. And that avoids a lot of problems. And 95% of the problems I see for new fish keepers are water quality issues related to ammonia and nitrite, not having a tank fully cycled. That will certainly help in that process. Now, other things you're going to want for fish tank maintenance, you might want to get an algae scraper. There are many different kinds there are ones that are magnetic. There's ones that are kind of old school. They have a little scraper and you just on a, on a handle and you just go ahead and scrape away. 
Algae scrapers will certainly help. If you're going to be using buckets to do water changes, you might want to think about a five gallon bucket. Some type of gravel vac might be a good idea. I highly recommend if you're going to do a gravel vac, make sure it's got the bulb on the part of the, of the hose so you can just squeeze that bulb to get the water started. It makes life a lot easier. If you're getting a larger tank, like let's say above 29 gallons, sometimes the python systems, the water changing systems can be helpful that hook right up into the sink. They can take the water out and drain it right into the sink and then you can just refill right from there. It's, it's a lot easier than carrying buckets, but definitely a gravel vac and some way to empty the water out in a bucket in your, from your new tank is gonna be a really good thing to do. Now, as you might have already guessed, water parameters are super important, and therefore it would be a great idea, especially for newer fish keepers, to be able to test your water parameters. I know this all sounds a little bit overwhelming, but trust me, as you get into it, it's not as bad as it seems. There are test strips that you can use, and I'll put the links down in the description below, where all you do is you dip the test strip in the water, pull it out, you match up the colors to a chart and you can see ammonia and nitrite and nitrate and hardness, water hardness and pH. And then you can match it up to the chart and just make sure that it's in line for the fish that you want to keep because you've already done the research and you know what those parameters are supposed to be. All right, I've saved the best for last, the most fun for last, and that is decorating the tank. There's a few things you're going to want to consider. One is the substrate. So are you going to do gravel? Or are you going to do sand? We've done videos on how to choose the proper substrate, which will be in the description below. We talk about our favorite sand as well. That will be there. I think for a beginner, often what's easiest is to just add gravel. The color of the gravel doesn't matter. If you want to go with red, white, and blue, or yellow and green and pink, that's fine. As long as the gravel is aquarium safe and fish safe, go with what you like. Sand is a great option as well. It just becomes a little bit more difficult when it comes to fish tank maintenance for the beginner, but either one will work great. So you're gonna want your substrate, then you have to think about, okay, how do you wanna decorate it? Do you wanna have some caves or some cool little decorations, you know, some houses or something like that? Plants, a lot of beginners go with plastic plants at the beginning just because it's easier. I usually recommend plastic plants at least for the first few months. Once you get the fish keeping side of things down, if you want to go with live plants later, you can do that. If you want to go with live plants now, that's fine. Certainly something you can do. I've got a beginner's guide to plants, which I will put down in the description below. But you've got some type of cave, plastic houses or something. You've got your plants. Maybe you want to add some rocks or some driftwood. We've done videos on how to prepare driftwood if you want to add that, which I will put down in the description below as well. And finally, you've got the fish. Again, my biggest piece of advice is when it comes to the fish, start out slow, have patience. We mentioned that in part one. The two biggest things a new fish keeper can do that be successful is do your research and have patience. And when you do those two things, you're going to avoid a lot of problems to start with. So when you're adding fish, it's just gonna be one or two with the Fritzheim 7. Without that, if you add fish, you are eventually going to get an ammonia spike and that's going to be bad for your fish. Now here's what we're gonna do. In the next video, part three, we are going to show you how to set up a tank using all the stuff that we just outlined here. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend check that out. It's in the upper right hand corner. If you want more information and more videos that are well suited to the beginning fish keeper, check out this playlist in the lower right hand corner. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.